Hello Tech World, this is Tech Thoughts, and in this video we'll be exploring if the home theater PC still makes any sense when there are so many cost-effective media options available today. We'll also be taking a look at my own recent home theater PC build to give you some ideas and maybe some insight to see if a home theater PC makes sense for you. As always, if you prefer written documentation, the corresponding article for this topic can be found on the techthoughts.info blog, which I've linked in the description below. So seven years ago, I built my first home theater PC. And at the time, it supported things like 1080p, it played DVDs, it did Blu-ray, it had the ability to stream Netflix and YouTube, it could surf the web, it could show pictures of my kids and play background music at parties when we had guests and things like that. And at the time, it had a lot of functionality that most people's entertainment center uh, didn't have. But you fast forward to today and you can basically have all of that in a $40 streaming device such as this Kindle Fire. With so many smart TVs and cheap streaming devices, does the home theater PC still have a place? I found myself wondering that after I recently upgraded to a 4K television and I went to fire up one of my family's favorite games, Ori. The game could barely run, it was slow, choppy, and although that kind of made it a little bit easier because Ori is a really challenging platformer, I, I found that after only a few minutes of playtime, I'd get one of these. So I found myself wondering, should I even bother upgrading? Were other media streaming devices out there enough, and would I be fine without having a home theater PC? I did ultimately decide to upgrade, and we'll get to those build details in just a moment, but let's first explore if the home theater PC makes sense for you. Price is probably the largest factor here, and there is no comparison. A decent home theater PC capable of some light 4K gaming is going to set you back about a thousand US dollars. You can go cheaper, but I think that's about the mark for today for a modern home theater PC that's going to last you several years. And a lot of that functionality can be had in a $35 Chromecast, which really begs the question of, with such a big price difference, is that much more functionality really being provided by the home theater PC? So let's start with streaming. If your goal is to stream mainstream content from things like Netflix, Hulu, HBO, or one of the other big providers, then get one of the streaming devices like a Roku, a Chromecast, a fire stick. Save that extra money on the home theater PC, take a nice vacation. So what about if you want to add a little bit more than streaming? Maybe some light gaming, for instance, which the streaming devices don't really excel at today. Well, there's a kind of a middle market that's beginning to emerge with things like the Nvidia Shield, which do introduce the capability of doing some uh, really good gaming inside of your media center, while still giving you the flexibility to do some of that media streaming type content and music. The NVIDIA Shield clocks in about two to four hundred dollars, which is still a significant savings over the home theater PC. So you may find yourself pretty happy in this middle ground. The consoles are kind of emerging there too as they start to step up their game and add streaming content and capabilities and additional media things beyond just their normal gaming stuff. So between the NVIDIA Shield and consoles, you may find that ticks the box of most of your media needs without having to step up to the price of a home theater PC. So when does the home theater PC start to make sense? Well, the bottom line is it's when you wanna have it all. There just is no comparison as far as the functionality of a full-blown computer versus some of these media streaming devices or even things like the Nvidia Shield. Every other one of those devices in some way is limited. The Fire Stick, for instance, doesn't get along with Google and doesn't support Google Music. Some of the streaming devices don't have every application that you may want to use. If you have a large local library of content, like lots of movies that you have purchased over the years, or maybe you have a large audio library, these types of devices don't always play nice with that type of stuff depending on what format it's in. A home theater PC really is about just having no restrictions whatsoever. So if you have a large local media library, for instance, and you want to access that via Plex, you can do that with a home theater PC. If you want to watch Netflix, if you want to do Amazon Prime Video or watch YouTube, if you just want to browse the internet and watch some Hulu, 
you know, access some CBS All Access, things that are not, you know, maybe accessible via other streaming devices or even watch something rare like on a Vimeo, you can do that. HBO Prime, it, it, the sky's the limit, right? And music's the same way. If you want to do Pandora, if your music of choice is Google Play, or if you just want to uh, use Spotify, all of that is accessible here. And again, because this is a full-blown computer, you can just surf the web. So the home theater PC is capable of doing a lot more than just your standard streaming device. It's up to you to decide if those additional functionalities that a home theater PC provides are worth it in your opinion. If this sounds like you, then great. But take a moment to consider that there is the additional complexity of having a full-blown PC. Your Roku and Chromecast, for example, aren't going to need to patch every month or, or need to run antivirus. But your media PC is going to need those types of things, so that's something to keep in mind. For me, I decided to upgrade my home theater PC. I do have a large local media library with lots of different various types of content on my network attached storage. You may have seen some of my previous Synology videos. I also wanted to do some light 4K kid-friendly gaming on things like Steam. Google Music is our family's primary source of content, which is not often included in a lot of the media streaming devices today. And I just like having that unrestricted capability provided by a full computer. You'll need to really consider what your intended use case is and what you're trying to add to your own media center. What are you really trying to get out of it? And if those needs are pretty simple, you can save a lot of money by sticking with one of the normal streaming devices. And even if you need some more advanced capabilities, you should look into things like the Nvidia Shield or maybe even your console of choice can provide some of those features. So do some investigation and see if you can save yourself a little money before stepping up to the full home theater PC. With that in mind, let's go ahead and check out some of the details of my recent upgrade. 